Matt Linklater here. I want to share with you some ideas on what I believe is holding you back. It holds me back, and I'm always trying to tweak what's going on in my mind each and every day. Matter of fact, I had a conversation with my wife about this this morning, and we see it with our kids uh, each and every day. And that is really what's going on in here. See, I was uh, with a gentleman here in Chicago. We went to one of his events, and he brought in Richard Koch. Richard Koch wrote the 80-20 principle. He was a consultant at, I think, Bain Consulting, Bain Capital. And... Um, Ultimately, there's about 150, 200 people in the room, and the biggest thing holding each one of these people back was their belief, was their vision. They just weren't thinking big enough. Everything they said, you could hear it in their language, the limiting thoughts and limiting beliefs that they were, that they were spewing uh, during the question and answer. And the biggest problem was it was never addressed in the room. It took to the end of the day for Richard Koch to address it. Now, it wasn't Richard Koch's fault. He was just there um, as kind of the color guy. The guy who brought him in was the play-by-play -play guy. So it never got there until Richard Koch finally got up and said, hey, here's the problem, which was painful because you had to sit there all day and listen to this. Because ultimately, we all are driven by our beliefs. I've had it before in my life, and I'm always seeking out coaching to how do, you, how do you tweak it. Just this past weekend, my kids were at the Children's Museum here in Chicago, and there's kind of like a treehouse structure right in the middle. And it's really tight. It's kind of a rope structure, and you have to go up. Well, you know, I've done it numerous times because I like to just get in there and get dirty with my kids. But I'm getting, they're getting a little bit too big, and I'm too big for us both to be in there. So I had to start just kind of helping them, you know, from the outside and pushing them. And there's two things they kept saying that was driving me bananas. Is they were saying, I can't. And they were saying, I want mommy. Look, and mommy's more courageous than me and more daring than me over the years. So I don't know why they wanted mommy. Mommy was going to be less nice than me. But in their head... What was happening is when every time they said, I can't, every time they were saying that, where's mommy, they could not find the solution. So they were paralyzed sitting there. We do that in our own lives all the time. And really, it's all fueled by our beliefs. And what is a belief? A belief is just an opinion, an idea we hold to be true. Now, how many times do you see in other people that they have crazy, whacked out beliefs, and you know it and you see it? Well, we all have crazy, whacked out beliefs that are holding us back in different areas of our life. And so really, how do you overcome them? And I think the biggest thing you have to do is understand where do your beliefs actually come from? You did not come up with your beliefs. I'm sorry to say it. They were installed into you, chances are, before you were seven. See, most of our, our, our personality, our beliefs, our confidence was installed before we were seven. Who installed it? Well, when you look and think back before you were seven, you know, what it boils down to is we are the average of the five people that we were around before we were seven. That's our personality. That's our confidence. So you look at your, your mother, your father, your brothers, and your sisters. And yes, you can say, see, I told you, they effed me up. They might have, but I'm not saying you can use that as an excuse. You've got to say, okay, how do I take ownership and change? So think about where did your beliefs come from? You know, in society, we all think like even an illness and stuff like that's all genetic. But I would say it's genealogical. We have ideas and, and archetypes and metaphors and stories that are passed on from generation to generation to generation that we hold true. So when you look at where do your beliefs actually come from, is probably chances are, and everybody I've done personal coaching with over the years, and every time I go and do personal coaching, it's always you know some kind of regression back to before I was seven years old. Because before you're in seven, you're in what's called a hypnagogic trance, meaning that that you really don't have a conscious mind, just everything's being downloaded on you, and 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 that's where you get all your beliefs from. So if you look, one of the uh, premises that I hold is if here's your life timeline. So here's you know you were born. Here uh, you're seven, and here you know I'm 41. So when when you look at all that 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 timeline for me is we form a gestalt. So we have an event that happens, and we form a belief around either that event, that idea. Um, think about you know think about some of your limiting beliefs. You know money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, it never was this way in my family. My family's always, you know, had struggles. Whatever you say to yourself, you know what I'm talking about. We all have these. So where'd they come from? And typically they came from before uh, you were seven. And so what happens is you had a traumatic event. 
Your parents had a traumatic event. Your family had a traumatic event. Your, your mom or dad lost their job. They came home complaining how, oh my God, this is it. Uh, we're going to lose our house. We're going to lose our car. Uh, we don't have any money. So they start saying these things. And so then, if that's a belief, what happens is our mind starts looking for things, or when things happen, we say, see, I told you so. So that belief in our mind starts recreating these events. And so we form this gestalt. And now I'm 41, and that's so wired into me from all these different events that, 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 that enforce that belief. But it's not true. They're just opinions. There's something that you hold true about something but it might not be uh, true uh, for the entirety. And most of these beliefs are there to protect us. So think about it. If your father, um, you know, one dad, our dad came home, and I'll tell you the truth, he lost his job, he came home, there's a, a six-pack of seven up there, and he kicked it down the stairs, and it blew up all over the place, and he was all up in arms. Now, he had a job, and a couple months later, and had a very successful career, but if you, if that was such a traumatic event to see a 6'2", 250-pound guy come in all pissed off and kick a, a six-pack to seven up, that that could have been so traumatic to me that I could have always been in fear of losing my job and, and things of that. Uh, but ultimately, so when that's so traumatic and that holds true, is then we hold that and our unconscious mind forms that belief to protect us. And it protects us from, from not losing our job, right, and not doing these things. But ultimately, we, you know, we're going to go through those cycles anyways, and it's going to reinforce this type of belief. So this is what's kind of holding you back in your business, in your life, your relationship, your health, are the beliefs that you hold around these ideas. Now, how do you kind of get, get, get rid of some of these beliefs? Well, one of the big things is, uh, you know, a buddy of mine was watching the Joe Rogan podcast uh, over Christmas. And the guy, I forget his uh, the guy, uh, Wild, the doctor, uh, he was on there. And one thing he was talking about was the placebo effect. And he said, well, what if we could just tap into the placebo effect and change our beliefs? We could have ultimate health. We could have success. And he's spot on, is that if you just tweak your belief, you could have a ton of success. So what is the placebo effect? The placebo effect is just an increase in one's health, not due to any medical treatment, but from their own beliefs. So what they do is they give half, half the uh, patients uh, the medicine, and the other half they give a sugar pill and you know 40% of the time the people with the sugar pill get better and so it's not from any treatment it's just from their changing their beliefs to have more success and so and the nocebo effect is a decrease in one's health not because of any medical treatment but because of their own beliefs so how do you tap in to that belief structure that you hold on so you can have maybe better health, cure yourself? But ultimately, we just want you to be more energetic, more powerful, and have a better business. So how do you tap in to that, those unconscious patterns and change the belief so you can have uh, a more success? And ultimately, there's many different ways you could do, do this. Number one is you have to understand what are your limiting beliefs. So if you don't want to go out there and you don't want to go sit down with a coach or, a, um, you know, we use a timeline therapy or a hypnosis or something like that. If you don't want to do that, this is, how, this is how you get, I think, you get started and get started about changing your beliefs. Number one is write down what's holding you back in your business or your sales job. What are some beliefs that you have that, or just write, don't even, you know, let me, let me go back. Write down all the beliefs you have about, about your, your job, about your business about your sales career. Just write them all down, any belief. Then we want you to go down and sit, go, okay, which one's empowering and which one's disempowering? So for instance, um, maybe you know, in a lot of sales, uh, we say our product's not good enough. We say, oh, they're only having success because of their territory. They're not, you know, just something. We, we have other, you know, all these beliefs that other people are having success um, not because of them, and we're having failures because of something around us. That's like a belief that everybody holds in business and in sales. So write down all your beliefs, everything that you believe, every decision you've made about your business, about your sales. Now go back through and notice what are empowering and what are disempowering. The ones that are disempowering kind of put a circle around. And then what you have to do is start reframing yourself. You have to start catching yourself about those different beliefs. Now let me give you a couple ideas on how to get rid of them. So number one is, you know, obviously just start setting goals around those beliefs that are bigger than the belief. Setting actions around those beliefs that are bigger than the belief. So just kind of identify, you know, the belief and what action it's holding you from and start 
you know, scripting out that action and start scheduling that action. So identify what actions it's holding you back from, uh, uh, script out those actions, and then schedule those actions within. So if you're not, uh, you don't like to cold call, and you know that in sales, if you make 20 calls a day, that's the minimum amount you should be making outside of your business, minimum 20 phone calls a day, and you don't like to make those phone calls. Well, you have to schedule those phone calls and hold yourself to that schedule to overcome that belief that you don't like phone calls or phone calls don't work. So schedule it, hold yourself to it, create a new action in, in, in place of the belief. So that's, that's, I would say, the first way. The second way is this. So, you know, uh, uh, you got to prime yourself. you got to get ready each and every day for the day. Because if you let the environment dictate you and dictate your actions, you're always going to be reactive. I'm not going to lie. In 2018, we had a great year, but I was more reactive than I was proactive. I was waiting for certain things to happen. Things got stretched out. And so uh, I, I just wasn't as proactive as, as I should have been. And so how do you become more reactive every day? And it starts with your morning routine. So one of the things in the morning is how do you, how do you kind of, you know, uh, the idea is how do you prime yourself? How do you kind of start fueling your mind with the right things so you can see different things uh, in your life? And so it's kind of feeding your reticulation activation system. Have you ever bought a car? And when you buy the car, you pull it off the lot, and you notice, oh, man, everybody has this car. So when I was 27 years, old, 27 years old, I bought a Nissan Murano, pulled it off the lot, noticed everybody had the car. You know who had the car? I was a 27-year-old bachelor. That's not who had the car. It was soccer moms and soccer dads driving around in that car. So, I, you know, I, I, but I noticed it everywhere. So it's the same thing in the morning. What are you doing to prime yourself for your day? Do you look at your goals? Do you look at your action plan for the day? Do you create an action plan for the day? Do you create action plan around your goals and say, hey, I need to do these things to hit this goal today? So, so the first thing is set your outcome for the day. What, what's the biggest outcome that, for that day that make you successful? And as you have that outcome, start planning your actions throughout the day. So that's number one. So look at your goals, plan your outcome for the day, set your actions, so reverse engineer your day. Number two is take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and meditate. Just Whatever meditation means to you, close your eyes, be quiet, think about your goals, think about your success. You know, go to YouTube, uh, you can find abundance ones, you can find uh, hypnosis, you can find a ton of different ones. It's just kind of get yourself ready for the day um, for 10, 12, 20 minutes. So what I do lately here, well I'll give you a few things, but the number one I've been doing lately is it's a 30 minute abundance uh, 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 meditation. I can go down to the last 12 minutes, and I listen to that. You can go to Tony Robbins and use his, uh, his, his daily meditation. So get something to prime you. The last thing on, on priming and getting ready is when I do a lot of stage speaking, I don't do so much speaking anymore. Uh, I used to do 60, 70 times a year, have speaking uh, engagements where I'm speaking anywhere from two days for basically eight hours a day to one or two hours. But what I do to get myself in the right state for speaking is there's two things. Number one is I use... Uh, I use Tony Robbins incantations on YouTube. Look them up, 10 minutes, get you fired up. Number two is I use the learning state from neuro-linguistic programming where you put yourself in peripheral vision. And so when you put yourself in peripheral vision, you get the mind chatter out. It's great for one-on-one -on -one appointments. And then lastly, go ahead and find a coach. Find a coach that can tap in and recognize, ask you the right questions and recognize uh, where your limitations are coming in and where your beliefs are coming in and how they're holding you back. The one thing on a coach I would say is this. A lot of coaches project onto you. So, for instance, we were in that one event in Chicago, and the gentleman did not hear the limiting beliefs because that's not what he is. He's a things thing. He's a things person. He writes books, gives you a system, gives you a process, and I'm sure you can be extremely successful. His business, I believe, is about a million to two million dollars, which is a great business. But his belief that he project on you, if he's not careful, will hold you exactly to where kind of he is. So if you're 500 grand, he'll get you up there, but it's not going to blow you beyond. So you really have to find, you know, a coach that's going to listen, give you your beliefs, and blow them out, and set new expectations for your life. So ultimately, what this all boils down to is this: our success is all predicated on our beliefs, and what are our beliefs saying about our lives? So if you can tap into the placebo effect, if you can tap in to, you know, how do those 40% of people increase their health? 
Not from any medical, any medical uh, intervention, if you will, but just a belief in a pill. And it's 40%. What I would say is this, over 95% of us or 98% of us could have more success if we just change our beliefs. Even if you look out there at health, just use this as a metaphor. So we hear genetics, we hear genetics, we hear genetics. It's something like if you listen to Bruce Lipton or a lot of uh, Deepak Chopra, it's somewhere between 2 and 5% of all diseases are genetic. So if it's genetic, yeah, you can't change it. But it's only 2 to 5%. So that means that you, even if you look at the realm of being sick, the placebo effect should work on anything that's not hard-coded genetic. So it's all genealogical. So all our beliefs, all our limiting decisions about our life, about our work, about our health, about our business, are all because of our beliefs. Tweak your belief, you'll have more success. So go out there and dominate the day. And the way you dominate the day is having the belief that you can and having the belief that anything is possible. So go out there and crush it today. Dominate the day. I wanna get